Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the field on the campus of Conway High School, where this afternoon the Wampus Cats play host to the Little Rock Southwest Griffins in a 6A Central matchup. Here are the lineups. First for the visitors from Little Rock Southwest. Batting first and playing third base, number nine, Fabian Hernandez. Batting second and playing center field, number five, Braylon Cole. Batting third and catching, number four, Jaden Jackson. Batting fourth and pitching, number 26, Landon Spear. Batting fifth and playing first base, number seven, Dante King. Batting sixth and playing right field, number 10, Davion King. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, number 15, Johansson Thomas. Batting eighth and playing second base, number 17, Zion McDaniel. And batting ninth and playing left field, number three, Kobe Johnson. The head coach is Stephen Owen, assistant coach is Chris Redman, and Braylon Mays. And now here's the starting lineup for your Conway Wampus Cats. Batting first and playing second base, number 18, Sean Cover. Batting second and pitching, number four, Max Holland. Batting third and playing shortstop, number nine, Tucker Satterfield. Batting fourth and playing third base, number 23, Thomas Ford. Batting fifth as the designated hitter, number five, Will Thompson. Batting sixth and playing right field, number eight, Willie Voss. Batting seventh and catching, number 11, Braden Bramlett. Batting eighth and playing center field, number one, Drake Naylor. Batting ninth and playing left field, number three, Blake Kordsmeyer. And playing first base, number 15, Max Owen. The head coach is Leighton Harden, assistant coaches Ryan Reed and Mitch Farrell. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise as we pay honor to America with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence, and then our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, our national anthem. Play ball. Good afternoon from Wampus Cat Field. I'm Levi Gilbert, alongside the man you just heard, handling all the pregame festivities. Go ahead and say it, P-A-Tim. 
<laughs> color analyst and public announcer, Tim Roach. <laughs> good to be with you again, Levi. It's going to be a good night for baseball. It's senior night. We have five seniors that uh, we're going to be celebrating this evening. And so it's a big night for those those guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll dive more into that in just a few minutes. But, man, not much has happened since the last time we did a broadcast. Last Friday we had the Conway Wampus Cap baseball game. And uh, the game on Tuesday was, quote, unquote, a rain out yeah. uh, at Bryant. So these Wampus Cats, they've had to sit with that Catholic loss a little longer than I'm sure they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot, I'm sure, a lot of uh, practice time, probably some good conditioning that went on. Uh, it was a pretty frustrating loss to the to the Rockets last Friday night. But, uh, you know, th this is a team that, that's built on resiliency, and, and I would imagine they are geared up and ready to go. Let me get, let me get Max in here real quick. Yeah, sure. Your Wampus Cat pitcher, number four, Max Holland. Let's go ahead and talk about him because Bo Billick would have started on the mound at Bryant Tuesday, but Coach Harden's going to hold him for this upcoming Tuesday at North Little Rock. So getting the start today, sophomore Max Holland, who it's been a little little while since he pitched, but uh, it's going to be a combo game we expect on the mound. So expect yeah. to see a lot of pitchers today. He's got a live arm. He really can can bring it from a catching position. Uh, he has got a cannon that gets it to second base. So you know he's got the velo there. It's placing the ball and doing all the things that you need to do as a pitcher that's different than a catcher. But expect to see a good outing from him. Probably not too long, but but a decent outing in, in any way. Let's get our first batter up here. Leading off for the Griffins. The third baseman, number nine, Fabian Hernandez. A few other changes in the lineup today. Junior Max Owens starting at first. Braden Bramlett starting behind the plate at catcher as Max Holland is starting up on the mound. First pitch from Holland up in the zone for ball one. Wish we had – this is the point at which, especially when you have a new guy that comes in, you'd like to have a gun just to kind of see what all's going on from a numbers perspective. That's a good pitch there. Evens it up 1-1. One, one. Got my friend Jason Williams in the in the booth. Do you happen to know what what kind of velo Max brings? 70s on the breaking ball, mid-80s, potentially up in the fastball. Okay. Okay, good. Live in the low 80s. I like that. It's a good place to be. Breaking ball hit over to shortstop. Long throw for Got Tucker him. Satterfield, and he gets it. That is the reason why you back up in the hole there. That was literally angled in for the 5-6 hole. Bad hop on Thomas, and a good backup play by Tucker. Now batting the center fielder, number five, Braylon Cole. So 6-3 for out number one. That was right off the edge of the grass there in the infield and took a funny hop. Uh, right over the shoulder of, of Thomas. Showing bunt was Bra uh, Braden Cole. Braylon Cole, excuse me. That's fouled off. <laughs> he straightens that bunt out. It's a double uh, down the line. That was going a long way. A well hit bunt. 0 1 from Holland. Over the plate for strike two. So Holland ahead in the count on Cole. Good breaking ball there. Right off the outside edge. 0 2 set up inside, gets Cole swinging. First strike out of the game for Max Holland. Yeah, that was a nice pop into the plate. Top two down fairly quickly. Now batting the catcher, number four, Jaden Jackson. Yeah, there's not a lot of. Uh, if, uh, if Coach is trying to see a lot out of Max the first inning, he's not getting a whole lot to look at. The word on the street is they're only expecting him to go an inning. Yeah, well, it could be about ten pitches top of <laughs> First pitch swinging is Jackson. He doesn't connect for strike one. Yeah, he's filling up the plate there. Good fastball off the outside edge. Cat's playing all straight away. Shallow in the outfield. Swinging again there, fouled off to the left, and second straight batter. 
Max Holland is up 0-2. It's, uh, the Razorbacks would tell you it's a race to, to 0-2. That's what they love, that race to to the second strike for their pitchers. 0-2 to Jackson up in the zone. Can't get him swinging. He holds off for ball one. Change the eye level there. Almost expect the uh, the breaking ball to the outside. Now that he's got him racing up with fastballs. 1-2 on the outside. He did go out, but it was fastball. I think Coach said that the last time Max had pitched was when they were in Texas. So it's been a little so bit. So he did, he did get some time in Texas. Good. All right. Gets him swinging there for out number three. Two strikeouts in the inning. And Southwest goes down in order. Bottom half coming up next on Conway Court. Gamer again. There's no soul to games. It's too ridiculous to be a glitch. Bombastic side eye. All the games that have released have been lackluster at best. Gamer Gab. Go. Back live at Wampus Cat Field. I'm Levi Gilbert. He's I almost called you Steve Owens, but <laughs> that's not who you okay. are. Okay, yeah, no, it's well, I'm not. I had Steve Owens on the on the brain today because the the Southwest head coach is Stephen Owen. No S. So yes, maybe no, made me go. think of old Steve Owens. Of course the play-by-play -play announcer for UCA Bears baseball and yeah. uh, Sugar Bear basketball. Yeah, overall decent guy. Uh, overall, yeah. Overall decent guy. <laughs> and and put together a healthy playlist for the Eclipse event out at UCA. Oh. They had him do a full thing, and it was all moon-related, moon and sun-related. He did uh, a lot of kudos to Steve-O for, for pulling that together. That's clever. Yeah. He, did, he did a good job. You mentioned it earlier. It is senior day. We'll have all those festivities, festivities after the game, but five seniors being honored today, Drake Naylor, Will Thompson, Tucker Satterfield, Braden Bramlett, and Preston Ribbing. Of course, we'll capture all of that on the field after this game is concluded, and all five of those guys have, have one ring. Yeah. All played a little – you contributed in various uh, capacities as sophomores back in 2022. Yeah. So. Yeah, they all did. I mean, and, and Tucker's been a starter for a long time now. Um, Drake contributed all throughout. Uh, Preston did as well. And Preston has has fought some some injuries um, here and there, and so it's a uh, and it's a little bit frustrating. He would be starting probably tonight, actually, uh, if not for working through some stuff. But hopefully, we'll get a chance to see him play tonight. Let's get the pitcher up here. The Griffin pitcher is number twenty six, Landon Spear. Now, if you trust Scorebook Live, which I don't, I I do to varying degrees. Yeah, um, it appears Southwest played a doubleheader last night with Mills and won it. Won both games, so okay. they moved to twelve and seven overall, but zero oh and seven in conference play, and it's kind of all over the place. I mean, we beat them twenty to one earlier, the first first game of conference play. Yeah. Uh, but they've played some closer games. Had a had a close game with with Bryant. Um, close closer ish game with Catholic Central. I think was seven one. So it's it's been interesting. Yeah, their 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 program is still trying to build, but they are they'll get there eventually. It's just it's just a it's a long road to get there. All right, let's get Sean up here. Leading off of the Wampus Cats, the second baseman number eighteen, Sean Cover. Cover a sophomore hitting 406 on the year. Had two steals last Friday. He is he's not a dead pull hitter, but but I will tell you when he does get a hold of one, it really rides out. He's a, a couple of home runs I saw this year. 10 swung on hard. <laughs> That's going to be Ooh. foul. Yeah, that uh, that went a long way foul as well. The uh, if you're walking into the ballpark you need to keep your head on yeah, swivel yeah uh, <laughs> pay but, attention but but he can really flat out swing the bat one one breaking pitch that's <laughs> spoiled off the uh the light pole here yeah. on the right side speaking of light poles he did take one off the light pole uh earlier in the season now he's got it you got to wait a little bit that's going to be the challenge for the for the Wampus cats here is to stay back on these balls and uh because the speed of it is is not something that they're used to um Again, we don't have a gun, but it's it's a lot slower than what, what they're used to in practice even. 2-2. Two, two. That's the problem. Yeah, going to be 
popped up to second base. Couldn't track it down, Zion McDaniel. Let's it fall in so Cover will reach safely. The fact that he didn't touch it, I don't know that you, that may be a hit. I don't know. All right. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the pitcher number four, Max Holland. Will be ruled in error, but a runner on first, no outs for your Wampus Cats. Max Holland takes ball one. Yeah, it. Uh, Kind of a, a weak infield, almost to get just to the edge of the grass. But but that's the hard part is staying back and trying to make good solid contact on a ball that's not really thrown up too hot. Griffins are actually playing fairly shallow in the outfield, They're playing straight away defensively. So wind is blowing out to left field. Anything to right field is going to get hurt a little bit, but it'll be more directional, not necessarily in distance. But if you get up one up in the air, left center, left field, it might go. 2-1 the count on Holland. Comes inside. He just lines one straight past the third baseman into left field. Cover will advance to third. And Holland got a double here to advance Cover. The third two Conway Wampus Cats in scoring position now. Let's see, we got a pinch runner, and is that who I think it is? That is number 13. That would be Preston Ribbing. Your attention, please, at second base, Preston Ribbing. And at the plate, the shortstop number nine, Tucker Satterfield. Phil holds off a ball up and away. Tucker hitting 316 on the year. Eight runs batted in. Good chance here to get to double digits. Big gap from left to right center. They're playing him to pull. But a lot of grass in between center fielder and left fielder. Tucker's work the count 3-0. Tucker, one of those seniors being honored today. Holds off. There, it's 3-1. That might work in, that's gonna work in the, I'm sure Tucker was hoping that would come across. Strike two. Yeah, you gotta go to work, full count. Sit back. Holds off for ball four, and Tucker Satterfield earns a walk. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the third baseman, number 23, Thomas Ford. Ford leading the team in uh, batting average and on base percentage. Got 14 runs batted in. Yeah, you know, I think his bat kind of got a little bit better after he moved back over to third from second base. I don't know if that if that has a lot to do with it, but first pitch swinging fouled out of play on the left side. That's a more. I don't want to know if it's comfortable for him, more comfortable, but that's a position he's played a lot more of. He's at the third base side, and they moved Cover in the second. Pretty decent infield when you look at the layout. <laughs> Fairly talented. Count evens at 1-1. And I've seen Thomas do this a lot. He can really shoot the ball the other direction. He'll go oppo with ease. Just kind of leaves the bat in the zone. Holds off again there for ball two. You've got Cover at, at third. Ribbing at second. And Satterfield at third. Bases loaded, no outs here in the first. A lot of room down the left field line if he chooses to go that direction. 3-1's the count for Spear. Oh, conference at the mound. Jaden Jackson going to 
head out to talk to Spear. Don't know if he's telling me this, but one thing you probably don't want to necessarily do is give in completely here and just throw one right center center cut because Thomas can take it out. He has a grand slam. He had one a couple of years ago. I think it was against Jonesboro, maybe. Um, but so he can he can hit the ball out of the park. Just yeah, draws a walk and a run comes in. This cover will score from third. All right. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the designated hitter number five, Will. Thompson. We know what Will can do with the bat. It's another one of the seniors being honored today. First pitch swinging that's out to trouble. left center field. That's way trouble. It's going to bounce once and hit the wall. One runs in, two runs are in. Thomas Ford will stay at third. A Two RBI double for Will Thompson. And it off the bottom of the wall, just what you wanted to do. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the right fielder number eight, Willie Voss. Willie, very uh, athletic kid, uh, built for the game of baseball. He's Well, he's built for any sport. He can, he's just very talented, period, but um, has – has kind of really leaned on baseball as his, as his sport of choice, but he's a talented kid. He works the count 2-0 to start here. Four to third. Thompson at second still. No outs. Nobody out. Swings there. Good play there. Taken in by the third baseman. Nice throw down to first. Records out number one. Are they calling it obstruction on the? He will stay at third. So they call it obstruction. But wouldn't it, wouldn't let him advance. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the catcher number eleven, Braden Bramlett. Was watching the, the play at first. It was a good throw, um, but he dove into the base path to get to the ball and throw it, and, and uh, there was some obstruction, but it did not advance it. Well, Ford came across for the fourth run of the inning. Thompson stays at third. So one out, and a runner still in scoring position for Bramlett. One one to Bramlett. He's trying to throw. He's trying. Looks like he's trying to throw a breaking ball that's just not, not breaking. <laughs> it's kind of hanging up. <laughs> not moving yeah, where not, he wants no, it to go. It's, it's it starts up high, and he's. I think he's expecting it to to come down into the zone. It's just kind of hanging up there, and it's if it's several high balls. That one's hit hard. <laughs> it's bottom the bottom of the wall. Of the wall. Thompson will score from third. It's an RBI double for Braden Bramlett. Yeah, and I think that's just a, a matter of the – didn't have a lot of speed coming in off the mound, and, and it's just hard to drive a ball out when, when it is not, it's not coming in hot. All right, so we got a pinch runner out there. Kean Brown at second base and at the plate. Center fielder number one, Drake Naylor. One out, one on. Bramlett's at second. Naylor tries to keep it going. A lot of speed at the plate, too. 2-0 the count. Five runs have come across this inning. You can't see it on your screen from this view. This is a great camera view, by the way. But between left and center field, there's a, an expanse. And, and really, I mean, 
that's out of, out in the way. But there is a huge uh, spot between those two spots. And, and and to be honest, they're playing Drake to pull uh, on the from the right fielder perspective. Not necessarily as much from the center fielder, but they are playing a pull. Man, there's a lot of space out there for Drake. Two one. Brown will stay at second. Jackson had a little trouble with it, but didn't let it get by. You see a good pitch early in the count. You really need to jump on it because you may not get one after that. 3-1 to Naylor. <laughs> I, I thought it was a ball as well, but called strike on the outside. Full count. Yeah, it must have caught some of the plate. Pitch from Spear, that one's fouled off. Well, you got to wait so long for it to get there. You were almost, I mean, you could tell Drake here they're almost double clutched <laughs> to even make contact. Barely got a piece. Yep. That's up in the zone, another walk. Third walk of the inning for your Wampus Cats. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the left fielder, number three, Blake Kordsmeyer. Blake is, has flashed the glove out of the field this year. Made some incredible catches. He's got a lot of speed. He, uh, we know him from the football team as well. Good wide receiver. Um, but has made some really, really good plays out in the field. Uh, don't know that he's had a lot of opportunities at the plate to really showcase that, but he's working his way into that. He's hitting 357 on the year. That's going to be foul. Down 0 2 now. I like that thought, though. I mean, he went with the pitch. Uh, it's, it's hard to send a, a ball opposite field with the, the kind of. Uh, Velo we got going on, and that was just a real nice way to leave the bat in the zone, trying to drive it, just like that. Hits it into right center. It will drop. Runner coming around third. One will score. Two will score. Two RBI double from Blake Kordsmeyer. Nicely done. Boy, he drove that ball as a line drive. No, no doubt about that one. Turn the lineup over again. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the second baseman, number 18, Sean Cover. Cover reached on an error earlier in the inning. Came around and scored. Takes ball one here. If he gets one early in the count, it's middle in. Sean Cover could take it out. It's definitely a possibility if he gets a good ball here. Turns on that one inside, and it will be foul. Uh, all around uh, ball player here can play any position, literally play any position on the field. Great stick, young kid. He's sophomore, uh, just super talented. He, um, there's not a lot. Turns <laughs> on that one inside as well. <laughs> Again, he. He wants to put something in play. Yeah, not a lot of wrong, wrong with that. I mean, he again, he's got to sit back just a smidge more. Um, he's, his bat, he pulls guys that, that are throwing, you know, 85, touching almost 90. He'll pull those. He's got good hand, eye coordination. He's got to sit back on him just a little bit. One, two again. Kept his hands back long enough there. Out in the left center field, Kordsmeyer will score from second. That's an RBI double. <laughs> How many times have I said that? In this a lot inning? of them, yeah. RBI double for Sean Cover. Yep. Well done there. He, he, you're, to your point, he stayed back in that and just drove it into the gap. Bringing up Max Holland now. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the pitcher number four, Max. Holland. Max had a double. His first at bat of the inning. 
Called strike one there. Still just one out, one on. It's Cover's in scoring position. And eight runs have come across this inning. You, you want to take your normal position in the box. I get that. But it's almost one of those situations where you might move up. Try to speed up the try to speed up the the location of the pitch, but if you do that, he's trying to throw a breaking ball. You might you might see it elevated too much. That's trouble. One's over on the right side. It's going to be foul. King had a little bit of trouble trying to check that down. That was in a tough spot. King in the field. King was up here with us. He left. Justin King. I made Justin sure he King. got his, his per diem. Yeah. It's That's important Is that stuff. what he came up for? Yeah, I told oh him he, he had to come up <laughs> this week because <laughs> I've been hello. giving the money. You got to say hello. Hmm. That's a good eye there. I mean, because that, what that is, if you, didn't, uh, if, you, if you try to pull that, that's a ground ball to shortstop easily. So good decision there. Two two to Holland. Fly ball out to center field. And that'll drop. Covert coming around third. Holland gets to second, legs it out. The throw was there in time, but they couldn't quite track it in. And another run for your Wampus Cats. At second base. Preston Ribbing. And at the plate, shortstop number nine, Tucker Satterfield. Welcome back, welcome back. Tucker was walked earlier in the inning to load the bases. Me thinks that Tucker wants to swing one. It's senior day. Yeah, he likes he likes a little bit of activity anyway. He's like most Satterfields, very athletic, but also very, very uh, uh, energetic, let's say. Ribbing will take third. Throw is off the mark, and Ribbing will just come in for run number 10. Clears the bases. Tucker has no one home. It's all about him at this point. Very selfishly positioned. So like him. A kid, of course. Good kid. <laughs> Very good kid. He keeps with the uh, Satterfield tradition of running of, of kids coming through the program, but also um, great family, great Conway family. And, and uh, they're here. Some of them are here for senior night, honoring uh, Tucker. He played. He got to play with Lake, um, who played on the baseball team as well. His brother played uh, baseball um, as a Wampus Cat. So just continuing the tradition. We have several families in the city that do that. You have the White family over there in baseball and softball. 3-1. Yeah. Drilled it. Yeah, he did. Into right center. It's going to bounce off the wall. That's three. Tucker he heading for third. Triple for Tucker Satterfield on senior day. Yeah, they did. Uh, he he laid back on that and, and still even then drove it into the gap. Nice. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the third baseman, number 23, Thomas Ford. First triple of the year for old Tucker. What? That's, that's what it shocking. says. It's that's what shocking. it says. It's a little shocking. There's a dribbler. Thomas that's gonna Ford. Be trouble. That's trouble. Spear picks it up. Throw not in time. So Ford reaches on a single, <laughs> and Satterfield stays at third. He'll get a little. He'll get a little bit of uh, coaching in the in the dugout from his his comrades on how that swing worked out for him. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the designated hitter number five, Will Thompson. Will had a two RBI double earlier in the inning. Takes ball one inside. Yeah, he hit a drive. Hit the one hop the wall. Bases were loaded, right? Yes. Yeah. If your book says that, I mean, you're, you're scrambling to <laughs> yeah, get space I mean, on your book uh, there. It is chaotic, to say the <laughs> least. A lot of marks. 
Keeps his hands back there. That's trouble. Good catch. That will be caught in left field. Tagging up at third is Satterfield. He comes across for the tenth run. Nice. Well done. Actually, Will Thompson. Yeah. yeah. Now we're up to eleven now. Yeah, yeah. eleven now. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the right fielder, number eight, Willie Voss. Voss was the first out of this extremely long inning. Yeah, there are two outs, right? Two yes. outs now after the sack fly from Will Thompson. Mm. That one's hit hard, grounded it through the infield into right field. So Willie Voss getting in on the hit party. Yeah, station to station there. Next up for your Wampus Cats, the catcher number 11, Braden Bramlett. So Ford at second. Voss at first, two outs for Bramlett. He had an RBI double. Yeah, he went off the wall. He was one of many uh, doubles. When well, he gets the oh, <laughs> hit yeah, by hit, pitch there yeah. quickly. Yeah. Where was that last Friday? Oh, well. <laughs> don't don't, don't yeah, start. I'm not going to get into that. Next up for your Wampus Cats, the center fielder, number one, Drake Naylor. Sixth time he's been hit by a pitch this year. Running at first base, Kean Brown. That I'm gonna say that was the lightest of the six. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most likely. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. I agree. Naylor first one. pitch swinging. Oh. Gonna be foul. That was gonna be a double all day. So we had we've had six doubles in the first inning. Is that what you said? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six. Six doubles. Six doubles, ten hits so far, and 11 runs scored. In the bottom of the first. Good start. Base is juiced for Naylor. Oh! Ooh, good play. Right the to the baseman. first baseman. Couldn't catch it, but Ooh, kept careful. it down. Ford will score from third. Good play, the first baseman to even keep that in the field. Would play. have been many more runs. Yeah, yeah. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the left fielder, number three, Blake Kordsmeyer. Kordsmeyer had a two RBI double earlier this inning. Ball one up in the zone there. Yeah, that's a lot of pitches this guy has thrown. Yeah, there's nobody running there. Good. A lot of pitches that uh, Landon Spears thrown this first inning. And the thing about it is, is you know, you see guys that will throw a lot of pitches when you begin with. They will throw 85 pitches in, in a ball game, but normally it's spread out over several innings. He's thrown quite a bit here in the first. No break. Just batter after batter after batter. Yeah, I mean, well, this is – the f second full time through the lineup, we're still in the first inning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're about to bat around again. I, I, if we don't get an out here soon, you might see you might see a couple of mercy uh, a mercy play here to uh, get us out of the inning. It's hard to do in the first inning, I know, but it, it, sometimes it has to be done. See what happens. But I can tell you this: Blake Korsmeyer wants to swing the bat. Fouls another one back, <laughs> stays one two. He's hacking up there. Good, good for him. It's harder to do than it was in softball. Of course, we saw the the Conway Jonesboro game yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah, you could step off to, early. Yeah, it was hard one. Yeah, this this. But what they'll do here, if they decide to do it, the normal action for a, a kind of a mercy rule to get out of the inning is they will step off the bag, and the pitcher will throw over and pick off. Mm. So that's how that works instead of coming off early. Hard hit to center field. That gets past Braylon Cole. That could be uh, that could be all four bags, and it will be. He is blazing. Kordsmeyer is. 
inside the park, home run for Blake Kordsmeyer. Mercy, mercy. If he didn't touch it, I, I couldn't tell if he touched it. Okay. Oh, well, okay, right. fine. <laughs> Meeting at the plate. So we'll have uh, my buddy Jason. Well, he did, he did touch it. He got a glove on it. Couldn't tell. Yeah. But you know the, th the thing about it is, though, talking to them, but I'll talk to you as well, is that if they don't, if it doesn't touch the glove, they they call it a hit. And so if he touched it, though, it's an it would be an E for sure. But if not, it's going to be hard. I, that'll be a tough one for play. <laughs> for play. He did hit it well, though. He smoked it. That was well hit. Uh, it it really there was no there was no uh, downward motion on that one. In any case. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to change pitchers or not. Looks like maybe they're going to. Yeah. Can't tell the number. Is that 18? It is. All right. Roderick Hicks. Roderick Hicks. 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 Well, as Roderick gets his warm-up pitches in, we'll go ahead and take a break and have the rest of the game after this here on Conway Corp. You don't wake up thinking about internet speed, electricity, reliability. Your mind isn't on advanced treatment facilities or customizable systems. You don't have to think about any of these things because we do. Conway Corp, always on. Back live here at Wampus Cat Field. We got two roaches in the two roaches in the house. Yeah, right now. Th well, if you count if you count Susan, does she count herself as a third roach? Uh, maybe. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> of course she is. Hey, Sam's doing a great job shagging balls out there. <laughs> oh mercy! <laughs> I'm going to pay for that one at the next family outing. Um, so. Yeah, that was difficult outing for Landon Spears. I yeah. mean, Conway Conway has struggled at times at the plate this year, and uh, they but there was not a lot of struggle there. No, and it, and it, the other strange thing is that it really has appeared that Southwest has gotten a little better. You they just look at their record, look at the, the schedule a little bit, but I mean, Conway's scored. 20 runs on them the first time they played. Yeah, and there's a lot more coming where that is. But but they are getting – I think I do see signs of them getting better. The spring shot up. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the second baseman, number 18, Sean Cover. Third time we've seen Cover here in the inning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He is he is uh, he's desperately wanting to get a pitch here that will come across like that. It's fouled out of play. Yeah. Just gotta sit back and wait. He last time that's what he did. His last his last his first at bat, he popped up just beyond the second baseman and was fortunate to get on the bag, but the last one he really waited on and poked it through. That went that over was behind his head. Yep. Didn't budge. <laughs> No and fear. It, it's not because he didn't see it. He just didn't have any fear of it. It's up in the zone again as well. I think that counts 3-1. believe that's right. Yeah, 3-1. Got a mm, pitch there. That's gone. And he got into it. <laughs> Fourth home run of the year for Sean Cover. That's a home run for Sean Cover. Yeah. He found what he liked. He takes the lead now and home runs on the team. That's going to be something he wants. Over this guy, Max Holland. 
Next up for the Wampus Cats, the pitcher number four, Max Holland. Yeah, he waited on that one. Uh, muscled it out right over the 330 sign. <laughs> A little dugout celebration over there with the Wampus Cats. That's a 17 spot. <laughs> don't see a lot of those, Tim Roche. No, 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 you don't, you don't. This is the third time through the lineup in the first inning. Max <laughs> fouls that one back. It's <laughs> one, two, the count. Yeah, he was looking at the bat, and that was not the problem. But it always is, though. I mean, when you're a golfer or you're a batter, it's, it's the stick. It's the problem. It's not the hands that are coming through. If it gets on, you don't want him to have a bat at bat. You don't want him swinging at balls that he doesn't even swing at. So I don't think he get, tries to get out here. But Well, he's two for two with two doubles. Yeah. Sort of Make thought. it three for three. In the first inning. Two doubles in a single now. All right. That'll bring up our good friend Lake's brother, Tucker. <laughs> Who's that? Is that Preston out there? It is indeed. Running at first base, Preston Ribbing. And at the plate, shortstop, number nine, Tucker Satterfield. Tucker's walked and hit a triple in his two at-bats today. Takes ball one outside. That one catches the outside edge. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen. <laughs> I don't know that I've seen 17 runs in one inning uh, before. I'm sure it's happened. Ribbing will take second after the ball in the dirt. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about baseball. It's, I mean, there's enough enough space between plays when you when you put together all of the actual activity of baseball, the actual plays. There's not a lot of time, and you get a lot of breaks between. And that's a walk for Satterfield, and Riven will take third on the wild pitch. But there's enough space there that gives your your, your teammates chance to do to hassle you at re, regardless of of the moment. So it's it's just a great sport. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the third baseman, number 23, Thomas Ford. Ford has a walk and an infield single. He scored twice. He's got runners on the corners with two outs. It, it gets to the point now, though, where you're like, you don't want to be the third out. Well, I, yeah, I know, but here's the but here's the other thing is that they're not holding anybody on. We can't do the pickoff play because there's nobody holding anybody on. So just going to swing away. Hard swing there into right field. Score one. Satterfield advances to third. RBI single for Thomas Ford. A rib, senior ribbing comes across the plate again. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the designated hitter, number five, Will Thompson. Will's got three runs batted in today. He had a double his first at bat and a sack fly for the second out. He was the second out. <laughs> this he, had, he has one of the outs? Yeah, oh, he had wow. the sack fly. Wow, that's His right. last at bat. He did have a sack fly. It was a good play. Hard hit there, but it'll be foul. Again, hard to keep it in play when you've got a real aggressive swing like Will Thompson does. We've got several guys that, that – you know, I mean, they can stay in the zone when they need to, but their natural swing is really aggressive, and so it means a lot of pull. And uh, it's hard to keep that in the in between the stripes. 
0 2 to Thompson. Pass ball. I think a great decision that time by Tucker just to kind of stay put. Good decision with the coach saying hold up. No need to score there. Ford will head to second. So two cats in scoring position now. Our half of the inning has taken about 37 minutes so far. Up in That's a zone. long time. Well, it's felt like a long time. <laughs> Hasn't it, though? Yeah. But yeah. an enjoyable long yeah, time. No, I, love, I love winning. Don't get me wrong. That's a hit by pitch. Hit by a pitch for Will Thompson. Base is loaded. All right. That's going to bring up Willie. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the right fielder, number eight, Willie Voss. Willie, one for two. Had a single his last at bat. I have to get a little creative in my PA duties here. Break it up a little bit. Hmm. First pitch swinging to the shortstop. Was going to go to second, but no one was there. Beats out the play yeah. at first. Scores another run. That's going to be, is that 19? Yes. Okay. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the catcher, number 11, Braden Bramlett. Braden has the most interesting walk-up <laughs> song, and what is the title of it, Jason? What is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's, but it's current, though, huh? Current deal? Okay, because it sounds not current. Interesting. Braden Bramlett. Get to, we get to talk about him a little bit later. One of our seniors. Um, he is going to play baseball at the next level. We'll talk about that again a bit later, but he's going to go play, I believe, at Lyon College. Four of the five are going to continue on. Uh, with baseball, uh, the only exception being Drake Naylor, who's going to go to Baylor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and become and a doctor. Become okay. a do uh, yeah, dentist, doctorish kind of thing. Yeah, family business. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and go do that. Uh, if that's your, if that, if that's, if that's how you're going to roll. Is it ahead. another Naylor to Baylor? No, stop. It's ridiculous. That's hit by pitch. Another that's hit second, by pitch. That's the second time this inning, right? And 20 run. That's the third hit by pitch this uh, inning. But two, two on him. Oh. Though. Yeah, two for, for Brayton. Well, when you say this inning, <laughs> it just gets a little confusing. All right, here's Baylor Naylor. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the center fielder, number one, Drake Naylor. Naylor's one for one. Had an infield single his last at bat, and he walked in his first plate appearance. Kim Brown at first. Thank you for waiting on me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to cut you off. Here you in my ear. <laughs> Swinging <laughs> Come on now. hard wow. there. Wow. Uh, had visions of ball climbing the uh, Centennial Bank sign out there. And Drake down 0-2. <laughs> Somebody giving him the come on, Drake. Takes ball one on the outside. You know he wanted to poke at that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, man, there's there's contact coming. I, I, just, I just don't see him missing this unless he just gets a, a break ball that he chases. One, two. Evens it back up at 2-2. Two, two. 16 hits in this inning. Is that right? I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to do some serious counting. That's what I think I see on the board out there. Sixteen minutes. I'll go by what the board says, but I don't want to. Don't, don't don't waste your time on that. Let's just say sixteen. You may have more than that. <laughs> I've got fourteen, All but right. I don't know. Yeah. All right, there's a walk. Another walk. Another run.
All right. That was Drake. So this is Blake. Another rhyming problem. Drake and Blake. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the left fielder, number three, Blake Kordsmeyer. And everyone in the lineup has now come to the plate three times in this inning. I think that's going to be it. Farty had to scratch out two numbers. <laughs> Dare I scratch out a third? Well, no. Please. Make them all be ones. I don't play. I, I smell popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are the kinds of games where, yeah, you head to the concession stand. Yeah, when, it, when in doubt, go get some concessions. See a few folks over here in the stands for senior night. I actually see some some ball players. You got uh, some volleyball players out there as well. Base is loaded. Let's see. You got Voss at third, Brown at second, and Naylor at first. See Emily Zimmerman out there. I think I see Ren Jones. Hey, I'm getting, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a long time till volleyball starts again. But uh, following up a state runner-up uh, spot, our our volleyball team and and uh, girls basketball team both with. Kordsmeyer hits one out right. to center field, it's over. and that will do it. Twenty-one runs scored. Go ahead and take a break here on Conway Corp. Education is all about vision. It requires commitment, investment. So we pour ourselves into Conway students and teachers, schools, and scholarships. A brighter future? Now that's powerful. Conway Corp, always on. Back live here on Senior Day. Wampus Cat Field, the Wampus Cats. 21 runs on 16 hits in the first inning. Looks like we're gonna have some changes. I know we have some changes in the field. You guys, um, Owen Davenport on the on the bump. Braden Bramlett goes from catching to first base. And I'm guessing that means that uh, Max will be behind the plate, and he will. Did you please some changes for the Wampus Cats? At first base, number 11, Braden Bramlett. Behind the plate, number four, Max Holland. And pitching for the Wampus Cats, number 19, Owen Davenport. I believe that's all the changes. Looks like everybody else stayed put. Got to see Owen pitch last Friday. He really did a good job. You know, I think that, that I was talking to Jason Williams over here, which is Witt's dad, and um, it's – it just felt. It looked like to me that the breaking ball was was not that that, that blew behind the plate. While he did a great job, I, I think he just didn't catch that. Was not catching the movement of that ball because it seemed like he threw more strikes than what he got credit for. So a little bit of a struggle. It, he doesn't struggle much at all. He's he's got a great breaking ball, really good fastball, just an overall good pitcher uh, for the Wampus Cats. And probably see that here. Let's get uh, Landon Spear up. Now batting number 26, Landon Spear. He was starting the game as a pitcher. Takes a first strike on the inside. Velo's going to be a little bit different than it was with, uh, with Max. He has a little more high end on this fastball. Breaking ball is definitely going to break more when he decides to throw it. 
Grounder over to second base. Sean Cover hauls it in. Nice throw over to first for out number one. Yeah, plenty of time. Able to get it cleanly. Now batting number seven, Dante King. Coach is checking, making sure that he re-entered everybody correctly. Oh, is he going to put somebody else in? Got a glove going in out there? Yeah. All right. It's 21. Alex Files. Going in for end of the ball game. For Tucker Satterfield, senior Wampus Cat, is number 21, Alex Files. First pitch, a called strike from Davenport. <laughs> I'll tell you where that was. He was trying to get out of the way of it and it was a ride down the middle. He put a pretty good swing on the ball last time he was up. Max did a great job trying to bring that up, framing it on the bottom side. Nice. Gets him swinging there. First strikeout for Davenport. Second out of the inning. Got number six. Jackson Robinette. Your attention, please, this change for the Wampus Cats. For number one, senior Drake Naylor. Number six, Jackson Robinette. That was the only one, right? I think so. I think it was. I'm trying to keep up with the changes. We'll probably see a couple more changes before it's over with. Well, try your best because. I know. <laughs> try and. <laughs> They're just going to keep on coming. You know it. Oh, I know. Good pitch on the outside. Boy, that's nice pop in the glove there. He's, I think last time we talked about him, we play, he, uh, he pitched against Catholic, uh, calling him your t kind of your prototypical crafty left-hander. That's just because his breaking ball is really, really good and uh, has a lot of movement on it. And his fastball has a little bit of that ride outside. Tough to hit. Good pitch. Two strikeouts in the inning for Davenport. Southwest goes down in order again. 21 to nothing here on Senior Day. This is Conway Baseball here on Conway Corp. Spring has sprung upon us, meaning spring thunderstorms are right around the corner. At Conway Corp, keeping you informed is important to us, which is why we want you to sign up for text alerts. Now, once enrolled, you'll receive text notifications about important information regarding your Conway Corp services, including road closures, outage alerts, and more. Customers can sign up by simply texting ENROLL to 501-450-6000. When it comes to staying informed about life's unforeseen obstacles, Conway Corp has you covered. Conway Corp, always on. Back live here at Wampus Cat Field. 21 to nothing, Conway on top of Little Rock Southwest. So gonna get that, that nasty taste of a loss to Catholic last week. Yeah, that's gone. Long gone now. <laughs> it's 20 run, one runs in the first inning gone. DJ Whit Williams over here, or uh, Jason Williams is playing the tunes up. I like that. We got a new, a new batter here, Levi. 
was waiting on blue to get ready to go again. That's always you got to have an umpire behind the plate at this level. Seems like that would be important. <laughs> he's checking in with our coach. There's a lot of changes coming, so he's getting it all in. All right, so we're going to get the new batter in. Leading off with the Wampus Cats, number two, Malik Simpson. Malik one for five on the year. He's got one run batted in and seven stolen bases. He's often a courtesy runner for yep. your Wampus Cats. Maybe some other changes that come down as well. A one bounces in front of the plate. Makes it 1-1. One, one. Spiked it. Malik just needs to be patient here. Just kind of find the ball and drive. Took a nice hack there, but no contact. One, two. That ball was a little up. Malik's a junior. Fouls that one away. A lot of times with the, when you don't have your, the, that, you're not sitting on that third strike, you see a swing that maybe is a little bit out of the ordinary just to try and drive the ball. Um, and But then you, you, you kind of fine-tune it when you've got two strikes on you, so you kind of expect to see a better swing from Malik. Trying to create contact. Ball two on the inside. Didn't budge off of it. That's nice. He's off the plate a little bit. That's uh, He's trying to extend his hands in there. Ball three up in the zone. It's a full count for Simpson. Yep. Nowadays you see guys that really, really tidy up to that to that plate. They get they try to tr get their hands over the plate. Malik is, is kind of using the barrel to do that. Ball down. So a leadoff walk for Simpson. 12. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 12, Will Upton. He is a, one of the kickers on the football team. That's how we've seen him before. If you heard his name before on some of our broadcasts. Got to punt a little bit, kick a little bit. Plays catcher as well. Not sure if he if he gets into the field here or not, if he's just batting, but he's one of our catchers. Little grounder back to the pitcher. One three for out number one. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number twenty one, Alex Files. Alex has recorded a hit by pitch on the year. He's got one stolen base. Files a sophomore. He's got Simpson in scoring position at second with one out. Pitch that time on the outside edge. It's a base hit. Hard hit in the center field will drop. Simpson will hold it third. Good base hit for Alex Files. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number seven, Kian Brown. Kian, of course, courtesy runs for Max Holland. He's got 11 runs, five stolen bases on the year. Take strike one there. Good chance to get some at, at, the, at the plate action. For a regular, to your point, regular runner, big contributor for the uh, for the varsity in terms of running the pa the pads. He's behind in the count, 0-2. As the other thing is, and I was, uh, J Jason Williams was talking about it as well. It's it's even for our, for our J JV kind of guys, the guys that get a little bit of time, not a lot of time, they got to wait. That's a barely a foul, foul, about a foot and a half, two feet. Good swing that time. Two strikes. Um, 
it, it for them it's even harder to wait it, it's just you're not used to the the pace oh two to brown it's swung on into center field and that is put away by Cole, but Simpson will score from third, so a sack fly for Brown. Nicely done. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the designated hitter, number five, Will Thompson. We think. Checking in for senior, Will Thompson. <laughs> His senior, <laughs> Preston Ribbing. That's good to see Will get in. I mean, uh, Preston get in. Takes ball one there. Two outs. Runner at first, it's Alex Files at first. This guy, they were gonna. He was a major contributor earlier in the year, and and then injuries jumped up and got him again. Uh, he's he would have been for the year would have been one of our major guns um, on the bump and at the plate. Just an overall excellent baseball player. He's got to fight through some of those things that happens in sports. You play it enough, you're gonna got to deal with the some of the things that go with it, some problems with uh, dealing with injuries, and he's had to do that. Bouncer there. Files will take second. How many outs do we have? Do we have any? Two outs. Two outs. Okay. Yeah, two outs and a runner at second for ribbing. 3-1 count. And fouled another one there. Payoff pitch outside and ribbing draws a walk. Getting some new names in here as well. Let's see who we got coming in. S number 10. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 10, Gavin Perry. Courtesy runner coming in for ribbing. And that is 14. London Stewart. Yeah, London Stewart. Running at first base, number 14, London Stewart. For senior, Preston Ribbing. <laughs> tried to wait keep those hands back as long as he could yeah it's hard to do well I mean you're gonna face it in in in, in uh, at practice you're facing people like Drake Naylor and and Owen Davenport and Cicero and all these guys that can throw you know upper 70s to in the low 80s some of them really going beyond that Owen Davenport going beyond that into the mid to late 80s it's hard to hold back It's going to be in foul back. Don't I'll tell you, I don't know anything about Gavin Perry. He's Listed as one of the courtesy runner options, but don't he's, have any stats for him. Well, he looks like a, he's built like a good athlete. He just absolutely fills the box up in there. Draws a walk there, and base is now loaded. Get to do that aforementioned running on the bases.
We have a plate visit, or a, I'm sorry, a mound visit. That is what you call a slow walk to the mound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, slow walk into the mound, that coach is. Oh. Got a little cramp action going on here. Tim Roach yeah. having to stretch you, out the hammy. You, you or, or <laughs> me. The Griffins. <laughs> 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 Looks like there's some decisioning going on out there. But I don't know what it is. Well, both officials out there as well. Okay. We're going to stick with him. Sticking with the young man, giving him a chance to work through it. All right, let's get Braden Bramlin. Next up for the Wampus Cats, senior Braden Bramlett. walk-up song that I'm not familiar with, but I'm starting to dig over time. <laughs> well, we got to hear it a lot <laughs> last, in the last first week, too. Well, yeah. I think you're still going to say in the first inning because we did get to hear it a lot in the first inning. <laughs> Base is loaded. <laughs> Two outs. Be a good time for a long poke just to get your first grand slam out of the way. Nice hit in the left center field. It will drop. One run will score. Two runs will score. And Gavin Perry will hold it second. Good. Good swing there that time by Braden. Let's see who we got here. Number six. That's, that's Robinette. Next up for the Wampus Cats. <laughs> Number six, Jackson Robinette. First plate appearance for Jackson today. Check Tried to him. check his swing, fouled it off. He got all that check swing. Ooh, a little up, but <laughs> you got to be ready. Gotta be ready to go. Gotta be ready to go. Gavin drawing some attention out there. It's second. Yeah. Two two to Robnet. That's outside. Runs the count full. Yeah, you don't want to develop a bad habit of chasing a ball out there just to get make the out. You want to make sure that you're swinging only at strikes like that. Hard swing there, grounded over to first, hauled in by Spear, and that will end the inning. Three unassisted for the final out. Wampus Cats lead 24 to nothing here on Senior Day. Back with the top of the third after this on Conway Corp. Hello, my name is Faye Hedera. Welcome to this episode of Meet the Conwegians. The experience of being able to sit across from someone who's so warm and energetic was really a privilege. It was fun and it was an honor, and I'm happy that I got to be a small part of saying thank you on behalf of our community. Some changes for your Wampus Cats. In right field, Gavin Perry. At second base, Malik Simpson. At shortstop, that's Alex Files. Third base, Kean Brown. Who's that at center field? Can you tell who that is at center field? Yes. 16. Is that Carter Crow? Looks to be like Carter Crow. No, actually, that's Robinette in center field. And I can't tell who that is out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I was impressed with all that you yeah. could tell. Here you go. Let me get Silas. And pitching for your Wampus Cats, number 17, Silas Cicero. Will, Will Upton is also behind the, uh, catching by the play. Okay. Okay. So there's some changes out there for you. Leading off for the Griffins, number 15, Johansson Thomas. Cicero, sophomore. It's recorded nine strikeouts on the season. Comes inside. <laughs> He's got some good stuff. Um, he, he pitched a little bit early in the year. Played some, he started at uh, shortstop early in the year. Things kind of begin to settle and move around, and we're still trying to figure out a lot of the you know positions and, and what all you got going on. But he's he's definitely seen some time. That's a great breaking <laughs> ball. Wow. Man, wow! That went from the hip to the plate in a heartbeat. Gets him swinging there. Throw down to first in time. Completed by Will. So strike out to start the inning for Cicero. We got another player going in. It's 20. Is that 22? That is 22. In for senior Braden Bramlett at first base. That's number 22, Whit Williams. I ran into Witt walking in today. Did he hurt you? <laughs> well, because he could. He said, are you Levi Gilbert? <laughs> and I said, it's my mission in life for no one to know <laughs> who I am. But, yes, I am. At the plate for the Griffins, Roderick Hicks. Chopper back to Cicero. Throw over to first. 1-3 for out number two. Nicely done. I don't have a number three. Yeah, I do. <laughs> now batting number three, Kobe Johnson. I couldn't find him. <laughs> well, he was in the lineup. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's the first time. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. I appreciate you coming clean with that. I was looking at number Well, nine. Hicks threw us off. You yeah, know. I, was, well, I was looking at number nine there. Yeah, you know, I was going to mention that to you. That throws me off when they it put the, the lineup order. He did. Co I, Coach, Coach Owen did a great job of putting this together. His man is super nice. But it did, it, it, the batting order. order I almost said that to you earlier well, as we were getting ready. So you see that I marked number here. Yeah. To, to try to help myself. But foul back. I would, you know, I don't I don't PA, but that would have thrown me off for sure. I would have messed up if way before so you So if had. you don't PA, then how about you stay off the critique? I'm not critiquing. You I'm did. critiquing the, the lineup, That's not exactly, you. This is exactly what you did. Strike three. <laughs> Out number three. Quick inning for Cicero. And your Wampus Cats up big on senior day here on Conway Corp. My music is something I've always had. Growing up as a kid, my, my family was somewhat musical. Um, my mom and her side of the family played guitar, and um, I have a lot of memories of uh, them coming to our house growing up um, and playing Beatles songs as a family, and then I would learn a few chords and jump in and play along with them and that sort of thing. God's plan, Tim Roach. Drake says it all. 24 to nothing. Drake knows. So we do have a new pitcher. We do. Dante King. If we just had a catcher to throw to, he'd get a warm-up pitch. Do they not let someone go out and... Catch well, that's while the catcher's getting yeah. ready. No, they do, but it's 
it's I guess if you have it, I don't know. If no, here, here he comes. Yeah. So oh, but you gotta, you gotta have a mask. <laughs> gotta have the proper <laughs> equipment. Can't, or you can't do it. Can't yeah. come out. So I said Carter Crow earlier, and it was Robinette in center field. I'm, I think Crow was out in left field. I just he couldn't turn around to see his number, but I think Carter Crow was playing left field. But he's going to be first up to the plate here. So that's my theory, and I'm going to stick with it. I'll ask, I'll ask Mr. Williams over here. Hey, Jason, was that Carter Crow in left field earlier? Could you tell? I think so, yeah. Well, this is the third of our six broadcasts, this uh, Diamond Sports schedule here on Conway Court. Next week, we'll be back over to the softball field. I would also say, can I do this real quick? Yeah, sure. So this is handed to me by, by Jason Williams. Um, Whitstead, there's a fish fry fundraiser April 19th here Next at the week. field. Yeah, fish fry. Adam's fishes. Let's get the Carter Ocker up here. Leading off of the Wampus Cats. Number 16, Carter Crow. Thank you, Jason. And I'll do that on the PA as well here in a second. Carter Crow, again, for those of you who watch broadcast football player as well. Yeah, he started to, to get into like, the mix a little bit towards the end of the season. Well, he was <laughs> – we had some struggles in the in some of the special team stuff. He came in and kind of shut that whole thing down. Uh, good hands. Really good football player. Can't wait to see what he does next year. Coach is really high on him. Uh, tried to get him in the game a little bit more last year, but, but you know, when things were rolling like they were rolling, you yeah. <laughs> hard to break stride. I'm trying to remember. I want to say maybe it was at Northside. He, he had a – Big catch somewhere late in the catch. season. No, he did. He had a big catch, and it may have been north side. Outside. Good eye by Carter. Good Again, good family. Conway family. He's a really good athlete. They've been waiting for him to kind of get into our system, and so here he is. Time is now. Payoff pitch to Crow. That's Grounded it. through the infield into left field. Turns on the Jets. Heads for second. Lead-off double for Carter Crow. That's the way you do that. Nice swing that time. Really kept his hands inside and just turned on it nicely. Good job by Carter. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the second baseman, number two, Malik Simpson. Simpson had a walk. Back in the second. Takes ball one here. Fish fry, huh? Mm-hmm. You, you had some of that last year, didn't you? No, no. Yes, you did. Not a fish person. You didn't have catfish? No. You had the chicken? <laughs> I, could, I mean, I would have had the chicken yeah. Yeah. if I had thought about it. But uh, it's, it's, Is it Adam's? Yeah, they do fish and chicken. So if you feed on a catfish guy, chicken, the really good stuff. 1-1 one, one to Simpson. We're doing softball next week. We are doing softball next week. Ooh. Oof. Carter. Carter headed to third. A throw off the bag. Led to a little collision out there with Fred Robinson. They both look like football players, though. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. They both are... <laughs> <laughs> I think they're both okay. That's that's a big collision there. But the collision base. keeps uh keeps Crow from scoring. Yep. <laughs> God, that had to feel good. Not. <laughs> Which roach can no. you uh, the most fish or chicken. Yeah, Brian. No, no, Brian Roach. Listen, if you want to have an eat off where you, no. I eat chicken and you eat no, fish. No, uh, well, it, he's more interested in seeing that. Uh, that's what Brian's better at than I am. It's eating. That's right. That's right. And it shows. 
Full count to Simpson. <laughs> and it's a walk for Simpson. Two walks on the day. For Malik. For Malik. Number 12. That is Will Upton. Will Upton. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the catcher number 12, Will Upton. Will grounded out to the pitcher. Back in the second. Another in long line of football players playing, playing big baseball as well. You love to see it. Yeah. Multi-sport athletes. I think it's a big deal. Oh, first pitch swinging into left field. Yeah. Gets past the left fielder. Crow will score from third. And Simpson will advance from first to third. RBI single for Will Umpton. Yeah, nicely done there. Good stroke. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 21, Alex Files. Alex had a single back in the second, stole a base, came all the way around to score. Been very active, yep. Yeah. And he's got runners on the corners with no outs. <laughs> that pitch was a little outside. Well, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, no. Everybody I, trying to do their no, part. No, no, I can absolutely get it. I'm not even playing around. I get it. I'm, Alex is the only one that doesn't get it. Now, if that was called a strike. <laughs> Just a bit outside. Might, Tried might the corner missed as they say in Major League. <laughs> but, but really wasn't that far off the first pitch. 1-1 <laughs> one, one is up for ball two. You know, our cameraman, Alex, asked yeah. me earlier if I'd ever seen Major League. And you had, Well, right? yeah, of course. of course. I just I was kind of offended by the question. Well... <laughs> But I, I didn't. I try not to take it personally. Prop, props to Alex. But yeah, I mean, you have to see. Major League has to be seen if you're at all involved in athletics. Yeah. There's some of the greatest lines ever. Bob Euchre, one of the greatest actors of our time. <laughs> Do what? Is he 91? 91 years old. He calls him Milwaukee. Yeah, Bob Euchre still calling. Just to. Well, yeah. listen, I'm, I've am i actively uh, we've got the full count here to Files. Takes a ball and another walk for him. I've been trying – I've been telling Tim Roach for a long time that I want him doing this till he's 91. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go, go on. You, oh. you need a new job. Who's that going in, 27? 27. That's second. And at second base, number 27, Brody Nash. Listen, I mean. <laughs> Hold on. At the plate for the Wampus Cats, number seven, Kean Brown. I want you to do this forever. <laughs> oh, well. I don't want to start over again is what I'm saying. Well, you get people like Williams over here talking about that I've been here forever, which is ridiculous. It's, this is only our fourth broadcast yeah. year, which that's crazy to say. Yeah. Can you believe that, Tim Roach? Yeah. This is our fourth Broadcast season will be concluding it here in a few weeks. Uh, well, May third. It's with been some baseball. good times. It's been some good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had a, Jason's had enough. Jason Williams has had enough of me on the broadcast booth. That's interesting. Okay. That sounds like something that Brian Roach would feed you is in terms of a line. Yeah, <laughs> he's texting you right. Okay. So Ken gets to bat. What did Ken do his first time up? Yeah, he, second had, time up. he had a sack fly. Yeah. Back in the second. So you're seeing some of these younger guys get, getting the chance to swing the bat, and they're coming through. Nice. No outs. Bases loaded. Chance to do some more here. You bet. Here. You bet. I hate it for Southwest, but, I mean, I, I get over it pretty quick. When, when you get to see some of these younger guys produce, that's, it, it's, it's good to see. You like to see it. Two two to Brown swung on right through the little gap between third and short in the hole, as they say. Yeah, around the five six hole. That was nicely done. Good job by Kean Brown. Turned on the ball. Who we got here? Okay. This is London Stewart. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number fourteen, London Stewart. Got Brody Nash at third. Alex Files at second. 
And now Brown at first. First at bat here for Stewart. London has done a little bit of um, pinch running as well. Pretty fast cat out there. <laughs> Justin King sent a text in and said, to tell Tim that he can attest to Brian being better at eating. <laughs> They've had many hey. lunches. Yeah. Yeah. I get a little jealous, too. I feel like Brian has encroached into some of my lunchtime <laughs> with Justin King, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are a couple of foodies. Called strike there. It's 2-1 to Stewart. Inside, for strike two. <laughs> London with a quizzical look to the, uh, <laughs> to the umpire and to the, to the bench. No outs yet, right? That is correct. Who's going to be the first? Fouls that one back, keeps the at bat alive. I can tell you that London doesn't want it to be him. Pop up out in the center field, well, left center field, tracked down by the left fielder. And Brody Nash will stay at third. Just got under it just a bit. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 10, Gavin Perry. Gavin drew a walk in his first plate appearance back in the second. You know, Gavin's ready to swing the bat here. I'd like to get some of, on some of the action, some of the – how many hits now do you have? I've got 21 on the board. I, I've stopped you counting. You stopped counting those. Yeah. Okay, so let's just go with 21. 26 runs, 21 hits. Don't adjust your screen. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, some of these hits may be hits. They may be errors. We, we're just going to kind of be light on that. We'll let, there's an official book somewhere, right? They keep in the box, but they keep the book downstairs. Yeah, yeah. I would never venture to say that my my I'm, you're not official. I'm not an official scorer. You no, know yeah. you're not. I've seen your book. It's not the official book. You're way lenient on some things. This has been the longest three-inning game of my entire career. I'm going to go on record. Yeah. No. An hour and a half. Our shortest three-inning game was the softball game we opened our broadcast season Maybe with. Maybe something to do with, with, with our broadcast. I mean, we've we've had – this is our third broadcast. Yep. Second baseball, but had third overall. Really tight game last time, but Ted Gummett, you know, I don't like losing at all. Wow. Check the dugout. Everybody clear out. Good thing they have a net up. Um, lost to Catholic 5-4 last Friday. The baseball team did. It scored a uh, top of the seventh home run. It was a no-doubter that that was the difference in the ball game. But we had a couple of chances there that just didn't, didn't, didn't land. But they are still with, with – <laughs> that went behind him. With the Bryant – Rain out. We're still four and two. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the Bryant game has been rescheduled to Thursday, May second, which is the day before our final baseball broadcast, Friday, with, May third. With, with Bryant, yeah. And they also p play Catholic on Tuesday that week. Called yeah. strikeout here on Gavin Perry for out yeah, number two. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I agree with you, Gavin. But we're going to go ahead and mark it down. Who we got coming up? It's Wit. Yeah. It is. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the first baseman, number 22, Witt Williams. Witt is drawn a walk on the year, scored a run. Again, another football player, and Witt looks the part, by the way. You kind of expect 
him to be in the mix for starting linebacker yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got all the tools. Um, good sized kid, real strong. Kind of so, kind of looks like it to me. Kind of looks like a young Preston Brock. Yeah, yeah, no. You know what? I mean, seriously, some has that same build. Similar specs there, yeah. And if you want to be a football and baseball player, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad model there. Yeah. Oh, took one off the elbow. Come on. You can tell Witt was disappointed in that. Well, Nash will score from third after the hit by pitch. Brings up Jackson. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number six, Jackson Robnett. We got a football score going on here. Twenty-eight nothing, yeah. Four touchdowns. Bases are juiced. You got Whit Williams at first, right? And who's at second? Is that Kean? And he got hit. That will score Alex Files. And we're having a visit from the Griffins coach. And again, giving somebody some time to warm up. I guess he's slow walking to the mound. We'll go ahead and take a break here. We'll get the new pitcher all lined out for you when we come back here on Conway Corp. At Conway Corp, we've been committed to meeting the changing water needs of this community since 1930 and are poised to once again make the necessary changes to meet future needs. Our engineering team is working on an expansion of the Roger Q. Mills Water Treatment Plant in Northwest Conway. It was built in the 1960s with a 1 million gallon daily capacity and has expanded several times to reach the current capacity, which is 24 MGD. Plans are in place to expand to 32 MGD. Now, in addition to this expansion, our crews are working on two other projects that will help meet the needs for decades. The cut back live here. There was no pitching change. <laughs> Just a short discussion. Called it a little too soon. Carter Crows at the plate. Carter started this inning. I'm fixing to say he's, he's already batted this inning. Yeah, right? he had yeah. a double. Came around to score. Bases are loaded for Carter. Called strike. Makes it 2-1. He hit a double. Yeah. Was it a double? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Another double. Right down the third baseline. Out in the left field. Yeah. Legged it out. And then uh, he was attempted to be tackled by the uh, third baseman for the Griffins, and, and he was – he made the first down. At the bag. Safe. 3 1 pitch. Blooped over to the shortstop. And is caught. And that will do it for the inning. 20. Well, I think I think it's 28 to nothing. Is it 28? It's got 29 on the on the board, but I'll have to there's a lot of counting going on. Oh, top of the inning coming up next here on Conway Corp. Gamer Dad. There's no soul to games. It's too ridiculous to be a glitch. Bombastic side eye. All the games that have released have been lackluster at best. <laughs> Gamer Dad. Ready. Go. Once again, a reminder, next Friday, the 19th, April 19th, there's a fish fry fundraiser going on at the Wampus Cat Field. Fish fry next Friday night right here at the Wampus Cat Field. we got a new pitcher, and I can't tell who it is. 25. That's Wesley Tapp. Your attention, please. New Wampus Cat pitcher. 
That is number 25, Wesley Tap. Do we have other changes? It looks like we do. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be some guys out here we don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Levi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're not on the roster. Well, that's interesting. Like who? What number are you looking well, at? Well, so I'm looking out here at third base. Who is that? What number is that? Is that Sam out there at third base? I can't see the Jason. number. Is that Sam? Oh, is that? Okay. I can't tell. I can't tell some of these young kids. I can't tell who they are. Yeah, it is? 24. Yeah. Yeah. So you got... We'll get some changes out there for him. 20 at short. Yeah. So, let's see. Who's that batting? Number nine. At the plate, Fabian Hernandez. So, lots of changes. So, Sam there, and who's 20? Okay. All right. We're going to get some help from some of the parents up here to Okay, so at third base, it's Sam Roach. At shortstop is Colson Ashcraft. Ashcraft, second base. Uh, Carter, Jones. Carter Jones. Witt's still at first, right? And Wesley, Tapp. Wesley Tapp pitching. There you go. Young talent in for the Wampus Cats. Tapp's only given up two earned runs on the year. He's got a 1.56 ERA, seven Ks. Taps is playing anywhere he can. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Good pitch by Tap there. Now batting number five, Braylon Cole. Yeah, some good, some good young talent here. I know Sam uh, is my nephew. He's he's a freshman. He's a ninth grader. Colson is also a ninth grader. What was the name at second base? Do you recall? Oh man, I don't. I yeah. don't have them on the roster Yeah, either. they're not on the roster, so that's a little bit of a problem. But I, I believe all three are ninth graders. <coughs> Wesley Tapp bringing some heat in. <coughs> He's another arm that we can count on down the stretch. Yeah. Good pitch there. One, two, the count on Cole. Nice. Good pitch. Good play by Will. Throw it down to first. Oh, yeah, no. He was, yeah, he was bringing it out. It. Yeah, he was bringing it out. He was transferring to the to his throwing hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> now batting number four, Jaden Jackson. Well, the way the ump was – Calling it down oh, he here. Was, made he actually it looked like a safe sign, but he was actually saying he was pulling. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, pulling. I got you. Yeah. So two strikeouts here for Tab. Good pitch. Well, he hadn't missed much in the zone at all. He's just been filling it up. First two batters. Again, another football guy. Whew. Blew it right by him. Blew it right by him. And there we go. Yeah. Three Ks all in order here for Wesley Tapp. In the top of the fourth, we head to the bottom half here on Conway Corp. Gamer Dad. Ashton likes to steal quite a bit. It's like too soon for this. Like she's kind of a kleptomaniac. So uh, what, what, do you, what do you think that says about her as a person? <laughs> I might steal. I might steal a lot, okay? <laughs> I'll admit it. But what I don't do, I don't murder people. I mean, unless... Well, unless they get in my way of stealing. <laughs> it is a virtual environment, so there's the opportunity yeah. to do some things you might not normally do. <laughs> Go! Live today at Wampus Cat Field. It's been a real nice day for baseball. 73 degrees at first pitch. 
bottle. Probably a little cooler now. But. Yeah, but bottle this weather up and keep it for the entire summer, I say. I haven't turned my AC or heat on in several days, so. Just out there saving money. Well, I got to do what I can, you know. Well, I know. Do we have a new pitcher? It looks like we do. Number five? Yeah. And that's going to be Braylon Cole. Your attention, please. New pitcher for the Griffins, number five, Braylon Cole. Braylon Cole pitching for the Griffins. We just so we during the break, uh, baseball softball rules a little bit different in terms of run rule stuff. Are you reading my mind? Are you going to do it? Okay. Then no, 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 no. I was, I was just texting uh, Justin about this. <laughs> it's like you were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, mind new, over yeah here. so they are. They are uh, at softball. We ended at three when it got past uh, what was it? Fifteen. Fifteen runs after or, yeah. three. Yeah. But not the case for baseball. They got to play five, is what the uh, folks up here tell me. It's number twenty-six. Is that that's that is actually? I think twenty-six is is Sam. Well, I can't tell. At the plate, huh? Yeah, can't tell by the number. If he would look up here, I'd be able to tell if it's Sam or not. I don't think that is. Yeah, it looks like it. No, it's, it's Carter. Is it Carter Jones? It, it's 26. Yeah. Now batting number 26, Carter Jones. Well, nobody screamed at you, so. Yeah. He and Sam are built a lot alike, so. I can tell by the hair out of the back of the, of the helmet, though, that's not Sam, so. There you go. Carter Jones played second base last inning. Ninth grader. 26. Called strike. Yeah. Called strike yeah. is the is <laughs> lean on that word you can. Yeah. That's good. Makes it too. Did you like how earlier when I was talking about the Bryant rain out, a quote unquote <laughs> yeah, rain yeah. out? Hey, gets on base at a baby. So this brings up number 12, which is, I believe is Will Still Upton. Will Upton? Yeah. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 12, Will Upton. Yeah, if you're gonna if if it gets anywhere close, that's gonna be the rule here. Yeah, you see some of that in the in travel ball and then tournament ball, and the blue will tell you, tell the kids if it's close, you better be swinging because I'm calling it. They want to see you swing the bat. Do we have a JV game today? We do. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's the plan. We will have, and maybe a good spot to talk about it. We're gonna have senior night activities. After this ball game is over with, uh, so about five or six minutes or so after the, the final of play, um, they'll get set up and then we'll recognize the five seniors. Those are Drake and Drake Naylor, uh, Preston Ribbing, Braden Bramlett. Uh, who, else, who am I missing? I had it all written down. Let me get oh, to my I'll notes. Get to it here. Uh, Preston, so we talked about Preston Ribbing, Will Thompson, Tucker Satterfield. Those there you are your go. Five. Those yeah. are your five, yeah. So they'll uh, do a little celebration of those. They get here at the, at the Wampuskets tradition, they have a wall that goes that it's out uh, beyond the third base line as you're coming in from, from left field. Oh, yeah, I see it. And so the players get uh, their name, uh, a, a brick with their name on it, and their year. Well, that's and cool. so it's placed into the wall. Yeah, it's a really good tradition. Started way back in the day. Full count to Upton, thrown behind him. And he'll walk. That is going to bring up 20. Is it Colt? It's is that uh, 
Colson Ashcraft. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 20, Colson Ashcraft. That is behind Colton. Didn't budge. Jones going to take third. Will did not budge over. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was supposed to or not, but there you go. That's him. Bouncer. Colson is the son of uh, our current AD, Clint Ashcraft, who will be, I say current because he's moving to Valonia. The Valonia system at the end of the year. Uh, at some point in time after the year's over with, he moves to Valonia to be the head coach of the Valonia Eagle football program. Proud for coach. I know he's going to be excited about co uh, coaching again. And I think Colson moves with him. Um, I think that's the plan. But uh, pretty exciting for coach. I, he, he loves he loves to coach, and I'm, I'm, I'm – been thrilled to work with him. He's such an ambassador for the Conway program, but uh, great to see him coaching again. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the third baseman, number 24, Sam Roach. <laughs> <laughs> you put a little extra on that. I oh, like look it. there. <laughs> hey, hit to the third baseman, steps on the bag. So, fielder's choice, but. Uh, a ribby there. Yeah, yeah, right. Good Sam. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 14, London Stewart. Yeah, Sam got a little extra H on the end. I'm going to family privilege there. <laughs> <laughs> Good job swinging the bat, Sam. I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, no, it's nice. He didn't waste any time, first pitch. That might be the best one you see. Yeah, you bet. Go out there swinging. So we got runners at first and second. That's Colson out at second. Sam Roach at first. London Stewart at the plate. All young guys, all getting some time. That's good stuff. Two one pitch, too far inside. Ball three. Runners at first and second, one out. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those innings you weren't close. You just gotta go. <laughs> you do have to expand. I hate I hate that you have to do that, but you do have to expand a little bit here. Full count. Yeah. And a walk. That'll load them up for Stewart. Brody, I believe. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 27, Brody Nash. Whew. First pick uh, took a hack there. Yeah, he did. So Brody Nash at the play. Colson Ashcraft third. Nash, uh, Sam Roach at second. One out, bases loaded for Nash. And London Stewart at first. Called second strike. He's down 0-2. And a hit there. 0-2 pitch. Brings in another runner. That's 30. The 30 spot for your Wampus Cats. All right. And the up needs baseballs. Yeah, the normal guys that are chasing down baseballs are out <laughs> in the field. <laughs> They're out in the field. That's true, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to find somebody else to do it. I think it looks like we got to change pitcher. Did the coach even come out? The pitcher's yeah. just walking off. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just okay. done. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think See what he's, he's talking to. There's nobody going to the uh, pitcher's mound. They may be trying to change out some material here. Or is he going to oh, re-enter uh, He's going to re-enter Landon Spear, looks like. At least that's the way he, he's heading out there. Making some changes out in the field as well.
I mean, that's what it looks like, right? Uh, the maybe? last time, the last time I saw, well, I don't know, uh, maybe. It, I'm not sure. You know, I think he's going out toward the left. No, or maybe going to third. They've got they got some they got some things kind of mixing around here. Oh, you or got number two, two coming two. in. Yeah, the yeah, pitch. yeah. I think a third baseman. So that's uh, Fred Robinson. Yeah. Does he go by Fred or Fredarian? Well, yeah, whatever was on the lineup. I, sorry, I was just looking at the roster from yeah, Scorebook. Yeah, for Darian. Your attention, please. New pitcher for the Griffins. New pitcher is number two for Darian Robinson. He gave that some pause as well. Yeah, making sure I get it right. Well, listen. It's appreciated. Not everybody does that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, tr trust me, from a PA angle, you get it wrong, you, you get you get. There's some feedback. That's why I don't do PA. I'm just telling you, it's just it's a it's a it's an active situation. All right, let's get Wit up here. Next up for the Wampus Cats, the first baseman, number 22, Wit Williams. Second plate appearance for Wit. He was hit by a pitch. Yeah, he in wants the third. To, you can tell he just wants to get the chance to really swing the bat. Hopefully he'll get a chance to do that here. Yeah, he was just about to swing at a pitch earlier and took one off the elbow. A little up in the zone, called a strike. Yeah. He just got to. Have you ever seen a, a game with 30 runs scored? Mm -mm. Yeah. No. no. There nice you go. swing right there into the hole. Scores one run. That'll hold okay. him at third. That's RBI good. RBI single for Whit Williams. Good swing there. That's what he was trying to do the first time, and he got hit. Good swing there. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number six, Jackson Robinette. Yeah, good swing that time by Whit. I think Jack uh -huh. sorry. No good. I think Jackson was also hit by a pitch. He was. In the third. <laughs> yeah, right after Witt was. Hit my pitch, hit my pitch. We've seen several of those, several doubles. I've seen a home run, a triple. I forgot all about the Sean Cover home run. Yeah, yeah, it's lost in the shuffle, right? Tucker Satterfield had a triple. Yeah. Had several that went off the wall. It's a 1-1 one, one count for Jackson. Yep, knew that was going to be a strike. Gets around the plate, got to go. Jackson's been playing center field. I think he's where he's been playing center field. And another hit by pitch Yep. for Jackson. Another run comes in. Let's see who we got. Is this Carter Crow? It is. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 16, Carter Crow. Carter, one for two on the day. Had a double in the third, and... Recorded the final out of the third. Who would we start with in this inning? In this inning? Uh, it was Carter Malik Jones. Simpson. No, it's Carter or, Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah, Carter, Carter Jones. Jones. Yeah, in from Malik Simpson. Yeah. I've got so much na yeah, so Carter, many names written all over. The reason why I ask is Carter's up in the, in the on-deck circle. Just make sure that we – this is officially – as soon as we get past Carter, we'll be batting around. I don't have many more frames to work with. I don't think we're going to have gonna to bat it. again, so that's good. Yeah, we're not. We're not. So yeah, that'll be the good thing. There you go. Yeah, you got swing. There's an out. Out number two. Next up for the Wampus Cats, number 26, Carter Jones.
Carter was hit by pitch earlier in this inning. As you mentioned earlier, he led off this inning for the Wampus Cats. He's up in the count 2-0. Yeah, those are two up. Too tall. Isn't it amazing? I mean, you don't know what Carter Jones is going to look like next year, but these ninth graders, you can really tell from a body perspective how different it is for a young guy yeah. coming, growing up that in, in ninth grade for most of, for most kids. There's some kids that, that, are, that are big in ninth grade. I mean, it just it's kind of sometimes how it works, but he's got a little growing to do. We look forward to seeing how he fills out. Good walk. I believe that's going to bring up uh, Will Upton, I believe. And he's out. All right. We mercyed ourselves off the back there. All right. At the end of four, our score, Griffin's zero, the Wampus Cats 34. Back with the fifth inning here on Conway Corp. My music is something I've always had. Growing up as a kid, my, my family was somewhat musical. Um, my mom and her side of the family played guitar, and um, I have a lot of memories of uh, them coming to our house growing up um, and playing Beatles songs as a family, and then I would learn a few chords and jump in and play along with them and that sort of thing. Back here in the top of the fifth, Wesley Tapp back on the mound. Had a great inning. Three <laughs> three strikeouts. Yeah, he mowed him down. Was not the, uh, what do they call it, the immaculate inning where you get nine pitches and three strikeouts, but pretty darn close. Really filling up the zone. Still have some of the, some of the same changes we saw last inning are still there. Matter of fact, I think all of them are. Got a text from uh, our camera operator, Alex. Said Conway has tied the record for 34 runs. I don't know if that's a Conway record or a state record. Yeah, probably, I'm guessing Conway record. But I, I would I mean, probably have a couple of occasions where something like that has happened. But not for Conway. Well, if Wesley Tapp can deal like he did the last inning. Boy, and he was. Man, good to see. Good athlete. Again, great family. Just just a, a good situation with that. Let's get uh, Landon up. Now batting number 26, Landon Spear. I haven't mentioned uh, this too much, but Southwest hitless today. That's No, that's... That's a good comment, man. I, I didn't check that. Spiked it there by. <laughs> Wesley, a little embarrassed by that one. But yeah, could be a combined no hitter for your Wampus Cats. I don't know how many no hitters they have in their history, but they've got a long line of good pitchers. Got one right now in the starting rotation for the Cubs, Jordan Wicks. Proud of that guy. I think he got his uh, first was it first win last last uh, outing? I think. Well, he had he got one last year. His first No, no, I meant like just this season. This year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not a Cubs fan, but I have been following what? I've when he's pitching, I'm a okay, Cubs fan. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, that's right. You're a Yankee guy. It's ridiculous. I don't know what that is, but I'm a Cubs fan. Awesome to see him get uh to get selected, yeah. Also, um, there were there are several. I mean, there's, we're in St. Louis Cardinal territory. I get that. But, yeah. But there were several people here in Conway that were super excited. Grounder right back to tap. One three for out number one. All right. Now batting number seven, Dante King. 
King struck out in the second. Holds off. Ball outside. Pitch up in the zone, but really good spot there. Our umpire is trying to move the game along, and I don't blame him. Good pitch. <laughs> Does Matt. it again. No, that's a good pitch, though. I think that was in the zone. That was that was well placed. I don't know what you could do with that one. Yeah, no, not a lot. Stand there and look at it. One, two, pitch coming from tap. Rolled over the shortstop. Just misplayed the bounce. Yeah, I hit right on that's an that's gonna be an E six. And a courtesy runner coming in. Number eleven. You got a different batter here as well, huh? Yeah, I'm looking to find him at the plate for the Griffins, number six, Kandarian Harris. Two one the count to Harris. No hitter still in play. Pickoff throw over to first. Close. Whew. That was close. Good move by Tap. Slap tag by Witt. Pitch. Boys fastball is nice. Got a good pop. Brings it in. Nice and tight motion. He's a big kid. What is what is Wesley? 6'5? Six, 6'4, six, 6'5, something like that. Yeah. Get some swing there for out number two. That yeah, was in the glove before he could get his bat off the shoulder. Four strikeouts now for Tap. Now batting number two for Darian Robinson, third baseman, actually pitching now. Good block by Will Upton there. It's first time pitchers have had to, our pitchers had to come out of the yeah the stretch. That's a good pitch. Yeah. Get some swing in there. I uh, just can't catch up to that. It's on them before they, they know it. Pitch. Final out. Of the inning, final it out of the game. Should be. Let's see. Yeah, they're walking out. And that's the ball game. Our final score: the Griffins zero, Wapas Cats thirty-four. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up, it's the senior night festivities. We have a junior varsity game as well, but please stay tuned for senior night festivities here at the field, Wapas Cat Stadium. Thirty-four to nothing. Huge. Senior Day victory for your Wampus Cats. They move to 11 and 8 overall. 5 and 2 in the 6A Central. We'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll get you all set for the Senior Day ceremony out on the field here on Conway Court. You don't wake up thinking about internet speed, electricity, reliability. Your mind isn't on advanced treatment facilities or customizable systems. You don't have to think about any of these things because we do. Conway Corp. 
always on. We need the senior parents to please report to the field entrance next to the visitor's dugout. Senior parents to the field entrance next to the visitor's dugout, please. Thank you. Seniors, we need you to report to the field entrance next to the home dugout. Senior players, report to the field entrance next to the home dugout. Now it's you. Now it's me. Now it's you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Wampus Cats, big win today here at home, 34 to nothing. We believe, I don't know what Alex's sources are, but we believe it's a tie to Conway record for think, runs scored in a game. You think Alex is lying? No, I don't think he's lying. I just don't know what his sources are. That's all I'm saying. What is, it, what is Keith saying to you? A Conway oh, player. Conway player. Well, you they know. They never lie. They never. Who was it? Sam Roach? <laughs> No, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Conway freshman. Might as well have said Keith Kelly was bringing that out. I mean, hey, I would, I would, I would believe it. I believe Keith. I would believe that 34 to nothing yeah, I don't, ties a record. I, I got to tell you, I mean, I've been around in baseball here a lot. I don't know that I've seen that. But, you know, again, it's the, the no knock on the Griffin program. I mean, they're, they're still in all their sports pretty much. We saw them in basketball make that, the state, the state uh, playoffs at our expense, no yeah, less. Yeah, unfortunately, but but they are they they are they're building that program up. It's a it's a tough situation. It takes a lot to, to get that done. They will get it. They will make it happen eventually. I don't want to. We you know you never want to be the first, right? We were in basketball, but um, they they'll get it together, and and they've had some success here and there, and. Uh, so it's just kind of it's, sometimes it's hard to watch, but we'll take the win and move on and celebrate our seniors. Coaches are struggling with the table situation. <laughs> it's like the first time that they've ever done that. We mentioned it at the start, but these five seniors, all part of the 2022 team, that won a state championship, third state state championship in program history. Yeah, and even if they didn't really contribute through the varsity levels. For some of them, they still contributed during practice and what have you. So, okay. Senior parents, we need you to report to the field entrance next to the visitor's dugout. Senior parents to the field entrance next to the visitor dugout. And for the senior players, please report to the field entrance next to the home dugout. So senior players to the home dugout. Senior parents to the visitor's dugout, please. Thank you. So we're going to have a little gathering. Crossing it. Yes, a gathering. Action here. Oh, that was David Thompson, who's leader of the, of the Parents Association here for the, for the baseball program. Always a strong program. He's got a senior. He does, Will Thompson. And, uh, but I will tell you, again, they're the parents here for the baseball program. Let's kind of talk about them just for a second. They are very, very, very involved. Baseball parents are in, involved anyway. It's just kind of a baseball and softball parents. It's a little bit different animal. They've been doing travel ball for a long, long time. These players, most of these players at this level, are playing through the summer. Uh, and not only playing multiple sports, but they're playing baseball through the summer. And so you get a kind of a close-knit group, but they are very active with this program. And a lot of the cool stuff that the players get to do, it's because the parents put in a lot of work. And at the field, they do a big field day at the start of the season. And it's, man, it is a lot of work uh, to get this field going um, for the season. And they, do, they just do a great job with that. For both, by the way, for both baseball and softball, we'll say the same thing about softball parents. They do the same thing. But while they're kind of getting set up, uh, you know, the, the season comes and goes so quickly. We still have a, a couple of games left here, a few games here left at the stadium, but they wanted to get this in. Uh, you never know weather-wise when it's going to be a great time to do things, and so you take some gambles and some chances, but uh, great night for baseball, great night for these seniors, obviously. Got a chance to recognize them, uh, you know, brought them off the field and gave them a little recognition there as well, which is good. See there, coaches, coaches' wives, they're also engaged. I mean, these guys... So you've got the head coach is Leighton Harden, but but he gets a lot of assistance from Ryan Reed, Mitch Farrell, um, and you know they use they baseball does 
and, and some of the other sports do this as well, but baseball is really big in this. They use some of the younger guys to get all the work done. There's a real, I uh, wouldn't call it a hierarchy, but it's kind of that way. You build in for some of these players, these younger guys that you saw in the uh, in the later innings here. They're getting a chance tonight to play a little bit, but a lot of times it's they don't get that. They yeah. just get they they have to clean the locker room. They have to you know uh, rake the field and do all the things. The, the other players do that as well, but they're, it's really on them to do it. So it's a family atmosphere out here. It's a, this is a good night to celebrate your seniors. Mention them again. I know you got a little script you're going to read here yep. soon, but Drake Naylor, Will Thompson, Tucker Satterfield, Braden Bramlett, and Preston Ribbing. Five seniors for this 2024 Wampus Cab baseball team. Yeah, and four of the five are going to be playing at the next level. We'll talk a little bit. About, they have beach, have a little bit of like a bio that they that they have uh, that we'll I'll read through. But uh, yeah, the only one that's not going could play if he wanted to, but he's he's choosing to to go in the medical field, which is Drake Naylor, yeah, Doctor Naylor's kid. Um, so I, you know, play baseball, sure, okay, <laughs> or you can go go be a dentist and 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 do that thing, and that's what he's choosing. It's a great job by Drake, and uh, you know, we talked about him at the Catholic game and. Coach had mentioned it in our calls with him that Drake has done such a great job this year being a leader and um, really taking a lot of the kids under his wing and and playing that role. You need that in baseball, and he's done a great job of doing that this year, kind of keeping things on the field directed. So what all is included here? Do you know? Well, they've got some gift bag. There's some gift bags for the coaches' wives, I believe. If I had to guess, but but the players get the players get a brick. They'll have they'll have some some things for the coaches and the coaches' wives um, because again they do they they contribute. I mean, yeah, they're they're on the field and yeah, they're at practice, but man, there's a lot of work that goes on with baseball and coaches' wives are right there with the coaches, putting up with their shenanigans and their hard work as well. I'm kind of waiting for the high sign from yeah. Coach Layton. You're waiting for the, the signal. I don't the go without Coach Layton telling me it's time to go. I'm going to wait and see. For someone to tell me yes. There's David Thompson coming out. That's always a good sign when David is getting things lined out. It's an adventure. That somebody's got to give the PA guy the high sign. Someone's got to bring the bricks in, I think. <laughs> I think that's what that yeah. is, yeah, yeah. Let's don't forget the bricks. It's a big deal. All right. Good to go. I got the thumbs up, so here we go. Coach, are you ready? All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this time we ask you to direct your attention to the field as we honor our 2024 graduating seniors. Tonight we are honoring five young men that have continued the winning tradition of Conway Wampuscat baseball. This group has compiled an overall record of 74 and 36 so far during their four years here as Wampuscats, including a 2022 6A state championship. Presenting tonight's senior certificates and senior bricks are coaches Leighton Harden, Ryan Reed, and Mitch Farrell. Our first senior is Braden Bramlett. Braden is the son of Bucky and Don Bramlett. He is brother to Briggs Bramlett. And Braden plays catcher in first base for the Wampus Cats and has played base on the baseball team for four years. He grew up playing for the Fieldhouse Predators and the Central Arkansas Baseball Association. Braden's favorite Wampus Cat baseball memory is blasting music in the locker room after the wins. His baseball advice to his teammates is just to compete. In 10 years, Braden sees himself being a licensed chiropractor. Braden has a 3.7 GPA and will be graduating with honors. He will be attending Lyon College and plans to major in biology and play for the baseball team. That is senior Braden Bramlett.
Our second senior is Drake Naylor. Drake is the son of Dr. David and Cindy Naylor. He has one brother, Dylan. Drake plays center field and is a pitcher for the Wampus Cats and has played on the baseball team for four years. He grew up playing for the Conway Cats and the Central Arkansas Bears. His favorite Wampus Cat baseball memory is the celebration on the bus ride home and then the locker room after winning the state championship in 2022. Drake's baseball advice to his teammates is just compete. In 10 years, Drake sees himself doing residency after finishing medical or dental school. Drake has a 4.17 GPA and will be graduating with distinguished high honors. He is involved in National Honor Society, FCA, Caring Cats, Student Council, DBS Big Brother, and CHS Student Section Leader. Drake plans to attend Baylor University and major in chemistry for pre-med or pre-dental. That is senior Drake Naylor. Our third senior is Preston Ribbing. Preston is the son of Michelle Walmsley and Jason and Micah Ribbing. He has two sisters, Avery and Olivia. He has played pitcher in first base for the Wampus Cats and has played on the baseball team for four years. Preston grew up playing for the Fieldhouse Predators and Central Arkansas Baseball Association. His favorite Wampus Cat baseball memory is hot seats in the locker room. Preston's baseball advice to his teammates is just compete. In 10 years, Preston sees himself hopefully finishing school. <laughs> Preston has a 4.19 GPA and will be, will be graduating with high honors. He is also president of Caring Cats. Preston will be attending Washita Baptist University where he plans to play baseball while majoring in biology. And that is senior Preston Ribbing. Our fourth senior is Tucker Satterfield. Tucker is the son of Branch and Carrie Satterfield. He has two brothers, Lake and Porter. Tucker plays shortstop for the Wampus Cats and has been a four-year varsity starter. He was all-conference selection in 2022 and 2023. Tucker grew up playing for the, Wamp uh, for the Conway Cats and Central Arkansas Bears. His favorite Wampus Cat baseball memory is winning a state championship with his brother, Lake. Tucker's baseball advice to his teammates is just compete and play as a team. In 10 years, Tucker sees himself living a full life adventure and Tucker plans to attend ASU Three Rivers to play baseball and major in agricultural business that is senior Tucker Satterfield. Our fifth and final senior is Will Thompson. Will is the son of David and Monica Thompson. He has two sisters Maggie and Esther. He has three brothers Wesley, Jack and Levi. Will plays first base for the Wampus Cats and played on the baseball team for four years. He was an all-state tournament selection in 2022. Will grew up playing for the Conway River Dogs and Fieldhouse Cats. His favorite Wampus Cat baseball memory is winning the state championship in 2022. Will's advice to his teammates is remember why you play the game. In 10 years, Will sees himself settling down with a wife and a dog. Will plans to attend ASU Three River. Uh, three Rivers and play uh, for the baseball team. That is senior Will Thompson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your 2024 Wampus Cat seniors, Braden Bramlett, Drake Naylor, Preston Ribbing, Tucker Satterfield, and Will Thompson. Next, our 2024 seniors would like to make a presentation to Coach Harden, Coach Reed, and Coach Farrell, as well as the coaches' wives, with a baseball signed by the 2024 senior class, as well as some small gifts of appreciation. They're like, wait, who's doing this? Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, getting guys organized to do stuff. That's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, those bags go for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Snacks? No, it's going to be for the coaches' wives. They're peeking in the bags. 
While we work through those logistics, that concludes our 2024 Wampuscat Baseball Senior Ceremony. The seniors and the families will now move to the Brick Garden, where they will place their bricks on the senior wall with all the Wampuscat seniors who played before them. Afterwards, we invite the seniors, their family, and friends to gather near the concession stand to visit around the senior display boards. Also a reminder that at the conclusion of tonight's activities, senior night activities, there will be a JV game between your Wampuscats and Southwest. Once again, our congratulations to our five seniors and our coaches and coaches' wives. Thanks for a great 2024. All right, great senior day for these Wampus Cats. It was a 34 to nothing mm. victory over Little Rock Southwest. Conway moves to 11 and 8 overall, and 5 and 2 in 6A Central play. And this will be our last baseball game for a bit. We will. When's the next one? May 3rd. Oh wow, the so Bryant game. This is my last baseball game with you. Oh man. Yeah. Unfortunately. You had to bring that up here yeah, at the end and remind me. Goodness. You'll be you'll be fine. Are you gonna do it by yourself? I felt like a little pang in my heart. Yeah, you're gonna do it by yourself? I don't know. I'm not really I'm not really a solo. You're not type, a color, you're not a color you know? guy. I need somebody to fill the <laughs> void. And it's gonna be a big void with you gone. I'm just <laughs> okay. gonna say. It. All right, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Our thanks tonight to Alex, Dewey, Keith, Jenna, Justin, Kara, Ashton. Of course, our thanks as always to our executive producer Jeff Matthews. Our next broadcast, next Friday, it's a big one. Yes. Conway Softball playing host to Cabot. Don't miss that. If you're not out here, watch it. This is going to be a great game. We beat Cabot at Cabot, which is a big deal last, last time we played them, so I'm looking forward to a great match. We'll have that game live on YouTube and on Channel 5, and Six Legs Productions will have the baseball, baseball. game mm -hmm. on their YouTube channel, Six Legs Productions. He's Tim Roach. I'm Levi Gilbert. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Friday. Softball versus Cabot.